Hello everybody, this is Miss Nancy from the Clearview Library District and I am here to do Clearview Homeschoolers Academy with you today. Today our program is about color. I wanted you to have something that was super fun for our last one of the school year. Um, we will not have Clearview Homeschoolers over the summer, but we will start back up in the fall. Um, while we're not doing Clearview Homeschoolers Academy, during the summer, I want you to make sure you're checking our calendar for our summer adventure programs. There will be a lot of really fun ones that um, would be great for you to do. Okay, so do keep an eye on that calendar. Okay, so I'm going to go through everything that's in the kit with you, and I'm going to do little bits of it just so that you're clear about the instructions. Okay, so first of all, snap a pic. Please make sure you take a picture, adults. Um, we love, love, love to see your kids um, doing the, the activities in the kit and see their final creations. Um, we love to share those on social media. So if you can send them to me, nancy at clearviewlibrary.org, then I can share them on social media or you can put them on your social media and tag us, Clearview Library. Okay? So please do take a picture. We'd love to see them. Okay? So... Today, you have a packet that looks like this, okay, and you have a packet that looks like this, okay. This is your coloring sheets. You can just have fun with these. They're just a little extra something if you want to do them, okay. Okay, so in this, as I said, we are doing color this month. Um, the Windsor Museum does not have a program this month. You probably read that. Um, they will start again in the fall, too, so. We'll all get together and get going later. Okay, so we're doing color activities, and we have three different activities we're going to do. Adults and kids, make sure you read everything all the way through before you get started, okay? So that you have a real good idea of which activities go with which thing, okay? So do that for me. Okay, so our very first activity is a color mixing top. Okay, now for the top, you are going to need this circle and there are two toothpicks. Okay, now I want you to take this circle, it's hard to see, isn't it? There. And I want you to draw a line through the middle this way and through the middle this way because that's going to give you a good center point. Okay. It's also going to give you four sections you're going to color. Now, if you read that first page, you would know that the primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. So I want you to make sure you do one section yellow, one red, one blue, and then the fourth section can be whatever color you want it to be. Okay? You can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever works for you to color. Then you can cut it out, going all the way around. Okay? And then use one of these toothpicks and find that spot where your lines came together and punch a hole, okay? And when you punch the hole, like I'm pushing pretty hard right here, because this is pretty heavy paper, there it went. Now, what do you think about the point after I use that point to push through? It might be dull, right? So I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and flat, and I'm gonna put a sharp point down. Okay, and that is going to give us a little top. Now mine's not cut out, mine's not colored, but it's going to make a top. And then you can see what happens when you spin it and what you see happen with those colors, okay? Now in your kit, I want you to make sure that you think about what you think is going to happen before you do it and then write about what happens, what actually happens. Okay, so that's activity number one. Okay, I'm going to put that one away. Activity number two, you're going to have six pieces of paper towel, and you're going to have three little baggies that are going to have either watercolor or food coloring in them. Okay, now you could use the other toothpick if you still have an extra, or you can use your paintbrush, doesn't matter which one. Now, you're going to have six plastic cups, okay? And from home, you're going to need water. 
So you are going to take your six cups and you're going to put water about halfway up in three of them. You're going to leave three of them empty, okay? And you're going to arrange them in a circle, kind of like a color wheel in front of you, okay? Then you're going to fold these. Now, I want you to make your wick about an inch thick. So see how I folded that? And then I'm going to fold it over again. See how thick it is? And I'm going to fold it again. And then I'm going to fold that last little piece. So I have this piece of paper towel that is about that wide. Okay? Now, when you arrange your cups on the table in front of you, every other one in the circle should have water in it. And then after you have folded all of your six wicks, Mine wants to come apart. That's okay. It'll come undone, but it'll go back together. You are going to add a little bit of blue to one of the cups with water, a little bit of red to one of the cups with water, and a little bit of yellow. Now, make sure you put enough in that you can really see the color in the water. You should have plenty. If you're having any trouble at all, you can put just a tiny bit of water in here. And then you could close it up and you could kind of mix it right in that little bag and then you could pour it out into the water, okay? Now I want you to be super careful with these, okay? They are watercolor or food coloring. If you spill them on the white carpet, you will have a yellow carpet, okay? So be real careful. Don't have any boots so that um, you don't end up with paint and food coloring in places where you don't want it, okay? Okay. So after you get the food coloring in them, then you're going to put one of these wicks between every two cups. It's going to look like that, okay? And then you're going to have it between the next two and the next two and the next two and the next two. So you have made a circle of wicks, but the wicks are only between two cups. And one of them has color in it, okay? And then you're going to let that sit for a little while and see what happens to the color, okay? Now make sure you make a prediction about what you think is going to happen. And then in the second part of your, um, your handout, you can write what actually happens, okay? Okay. Now, if you don't understand anything, make sure you just read the directions again because I think you're going to be in good shape in doing this one. This one's super fun, okay? Okay, now your third activity, let me get to it, is your canvas painting. And this is the part that I thought would be really fun for you to have something as fun as this for your last activity. So you will find that in your kit, you have a canvas. Now your canvas may or may not be wrapped in plastic. But all of your canvases have masking tape wrapped around them. And hopefully you didn't peel that off yet because that masking tape is really important. You're going to take the, the masking tape off your canvas. And I hung mine on the edge of the table just so it stayed nice and straight so I can use it again. That's the really important thing is when you take it off of your canvas, you are going to use that masking tape. Okay, so be real careful, pull it all off, hang it from a chair or a table or whatever so that it's ready for you to use. And then if you have a plastic cover on your canvas, take that off and throw it away. Okay, then you can take those pieces of tape and can you see that? There you go. You will make a pattern on your canvas. Now don't make it look just like mine because there are a million ways you could do it. And you can turn it different ways if you want it horizontal or vertically. But you can do your design. And you should have plenty of tape. Some people will want to just come across a couple different places. Um, you can be very abstract. You could be very straight. That's totally up to you. You can make little pieces come off of a big piece like these do. Or you can make them all big pieces crisscrossing your canvas in different places. Okay, 
Now, you are making sections to be able to paint them, okay? So you're going to paint each of the sections between that masking tape, okay? Now, in this kit, you have yellow paint and red paint and blue paint, okay? You also have um, a couple little paper plates, and those are for you to use to mix your paint. So I would recommend that you use your little containers of red, yellow, and blue to color a few of your sections first, and then use that plate to mix. So for example, you might mix blue and red. You might mix red and yellow. You might mix yellow and blue, okay? And those are going to give you those secondary colors, okay? So you're going to paint those. Now, I do want to show you a little bit about a technique for painting. And I have the, the big containers um, that have just a little bit of paint left in them. And if I can get one of them open, <laughs> there we go. I can show you how to do this. Okay, so I have a pretty big paintbrush. And when I am brushing, let me make sure, I don't want to come like this because I might pour some, some paint under the edge of this tape. So when I'm brushing, I want to brush from the tape out. And that helps keep that tape down on the canvas and it'll help your edges be more perfect. Now, the other thing that's going to help your edges be good is if you have really, really spent some time pressing all your tape down, okay? So make sure you take that time to press it all down so that it stays in place really, really tight, okay? So I'm going to get some red paint on my brush, and you might not want to get an awful lot of paint on your brush, okay? And then you're going to paint like this, starting from the tape, so that you're moving down into the canvas instead of up at the tape, because that's how you'll get those little bits of paint all stuck underneath the tape. Now, if you end up with some paint under the tape, it's not going to be a real big deal, okay? It's okay. It does not have to be perfect. Sometimes it's the imperfections in our art that make it the very best, okay? So, there we go. I have plenty of red, and I've done all of my strokes away from the tape, okay? Now, one thing you might want to do is make sure you get your edge, okay? Because it really does make it pretty if your picture has nice edges, too. Okay, so I'm going to do those edges. Again, moving away from the tape so that I have a good edge. I have a little bit of paint slopped over the front, so I'm going to just add it to the front. Now, see how little paint I used? How many times did I dip my brush into my bottle? I only brushed it, dipped it twice, okay? So you don't need very much paint. And when I dipped it into my paint, I did not have very much on my brush, okay? So you just want a little bit of paint. You want to get it nice and smooth. You want to make sure you're not scrubbing toward the tape, okay? Okay. So I have my red section done. Now I would go and wash my brush in the kitchen sink, and then I would come back and do another color. Now, adults in the house, if you want to, you can get your children a big jar of um, water so they can wash their brush right at the table. That's up to you, or they can just walk to the kitchen and rinse it out and dry it off a little so you don't drip across the floor, and then you can come sit down and do another color. Now, I might want to do more than one section in a certain color, okay? Since I have red down here, I might want to do red in this one. Should I do that? Okay, so we're gonna do one more red section. See how I'm making sure there's not very much paint on that brush? 
and then I'm doing this section right here. And again, I'm just brushing away from the tape. Now, you will notice when you look at my sections that none of them are terribly, terribly tiny because it would be hard to do really tiny, tiny sections, but it also would mean that when you take the tape off, you would have a lot of white because the area underneath your tape is going to stay white, okay? So don't use too much tape. You wanna have some nice, bold, bright sections of color, okay? Okay, so tell me what colors you're going to have when you're all done. If you have three primary colors and three secondary colors, how many different colors will you have on your painting? You'll have six, won't you? Now, if you want to make a yellower orange or a bluer green, like an evergreen color, then you could mix another set of colors that are the next um, next mixture, okay? But really, your primaries and your secondaries should be enough because you shouldn't have so many pieces in your canvas that you would have to um, do a million different colors, okay? Okay, so that's what mine looks like with one color. I am not gonna pull my tape off until I'm finished with my picture because I want it to be a surprise. And I think you're gonna have a really good time when you pour, pull that tape off because it's really going to be cool what it looks like when you're all finished, okay? So the other thing I want to remind you is do let it dry completely before you pull any tape off, okay? So you want to have all of your painting finished and all of your paint dry before you pull the tape off, okay? Okay, so I hope you have fun with that. I think you will. And um, have fun painting and making something really colorful that you can hang up in your house. Make sure that you follow these directions. They'll give you some clues on all you need to do. You'll notice my last direction, number six, is bold. And that's because I want you to make sure you let it dry before you pull that tape off. Okay? Now, at the very last page of your instruction sheet, there are some books and resources that we have in the library. Some of them are ebooks or e audio books. Some of them are physical books. Lots of fun things about color and about color theory that you could read and do some research in. So also some picture books that would be fun that are about color also. So I hope that you will come in and check out a book about color and enjoy that as part of your um, project this month. Okay? Okay, well, that's all for this month. I hope you guys have fun doing your activities. I will um, see you in the fall or during the summer. Thank you.